Hey YouTube family, how's it going today? This is uh, Truck Rider Trucking, Curtis Barnes, and a, another episode of my videos in my life. And I just wanted to touch bases with you guys and say hi to you, see how everybody's doing, and uh, let you know that I'm just about, about 50 miles from my destination of uh, delivering my two loads in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, got here a little bit early today. I cannot deliver until starting at 9 o'clock tomorrow is my first drop at my O2. And then I have a 9, 11 o'clock appointment for the final drop of the 90. But just to give you guys a heads up, everything's going smooth so far. Uh, not, no incidents, no issues, no problems. Cross your fingers and uh, just, uh, just to touch bases and uh, do stuff, you know, and just a topic of conversation right now, I just wanted to, uh, I was given a certain deal, I stopped yesterday, I don't know, I don't think I did any videos, but I stopped, oh, I'd say, I wanted to do laundry, but I couldn't, but I needed a shower, and I wanted to just stop and, you know, take a break, and I knew I had an extra day to run. And I'm trying to adjust everything for my 70 hour clock because it's dropping and I'm getting to do, I'm setting a recaps tonight. Starting at midnight, I get uh, eight hours and 14 minutes back on my 70. So anyway, I'm doing that readjustment. Last time, uh, last week I had it set up pretty good and I was running smooth and it was going to go okay. But then, you know, the issue with the APU and the uh, alternator went out on it and I ended up back in Springfield and I actually ended up doing a, a 34 hour reset basically and got a brand new fresh clock so anyway I'm back to that point now to where it's dropped down below uh, 10 hours so I'm going to redo that but <clears throat> yesterday when I had finally stopped in uh, around Danville I think it was Danville Illinois or somewhere in that area uh, I got a, a Qualcomm man sheet from my fleet manager asking if I'd be interested in repowering a load and I've talked to a couple of people, my trainer for one, Jamal, and also uh, No Hippie Trucking and Transportation, Lyle. And uh, it, I guess I played a rookie deal there, kind of, because I didn't know the concept of a repower. I never was, never had done one. I never knew nothing about it. But I knew that the load I was on paid real good for me, that I think is good for me. I mean, <laughs> you know, anything's good for me right now. But... You know, and I, I kind of thought about it for a little bit, and I realized I still had a couple of days left on this, and I had a system I was working out. And I know as a lease operator, you're basically your own person, but then you don't want to burn any bridges with anybody, and especially with your fleet manager, you know, you don't want to cause an issue with that because that can end up making it bad for you. But uh, anyway, it was a load to repower for a buck 24 a mile, back to Iowa, uh, Dubois, Iowa, just north of Cedar Rapids, and I did not accept it. I, that was my first major decline of anything since I've been doing uh, lease operating, since I went back on, I went on the road myself, by myself, and uh, you know, I got to wondering if that was a mistake or not, so I conversed in a couple of my good friends, Lyle, one of them, and also my trainer today, this morning, and you know, it's a it's a toss-up I guess you could you, you, hindsight 2020 you could end up doing it and then lose but you can also do it and make a you know make it to where you might be taken care of in the long run you know and I understand what he was saying and after I talked to my trainer about it yesterday Jamal and I'll keep telling him my trainer because he is my trainer and he's the one that taught me and got me out here on my own and you know and after his comments and everything i i did something that probably know what a lot of people do i called my fleet manager and i wanted to make sure that he understood that you know that i cared and uh, i don't know if that's a smart thing to do or not but i got a hold of my fleet manager and we've talked about it you know and he says well you know i got to thinking about it too after i'd sent you that message and I can see now, fully understand why you didn't accept it is because there would have been a drop in pay. And he said, you ain't got nothing to worry about. 
And I said, well, I don't want to burn any bridges with you. You know, I, you know me, I'll do, I'll, I'll try to do any load and every load, you know, unless it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and he said, yeah, I know you've been fine. You didn't, you're done, you're doing good. I know you've had issues and problems and, and uh, it's unfortunate, you know, and I'm sorry to hear, you know, I'm sorry to see it happen to you, especially when you first began, but at least you're trying to hang in there and try to do the best you can. And he said, when I gave you that load, asked you to take that load, I got to realize that you were on a good load already and then uh, everything. Well, I said, well, I don't want, I don't want to burn any bridges with you because I don't want to end up with a $75 load somewhere, you know, and he said, no, 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 no. The repower happened. Everything was taken care of. He said, you're good to go. He said, I ain't, I ain't got no grudges going. He said, I don't blame you for what you did. I would have done the same thing probably. So we, I got that cleared up with the fleet manager. And I think that's a big deal is to communicate with your fleet manager. I think that's important that, you know, I showed I cared. I mean, you know, I could have just blowed it off and not said any more about it, but I thought it was necessary to, you know, tell him, hey, I didn't know if I made a mistake or not. I don't know how to do this. So it's a learning curve and it was a very good learning experience and, and the information was given by Lyle and Jamal were, was very helpful for the future. And there'll be certain, certain situations where it makes sense to repower a different load and get it done and it, it just because of locations and where you're at, Jamal also mentioned, you know, since you're going to Iowa, if you went took it to Iowa, you have a good opportunity to get a good paying load a meat load or something out of there and going somewhere back east or something like that. There's always, you always want to pay attention to what the money is, what location it is, and where it's going to be a good, good place to get a good, good paying load. So good learning curve, good learning experience. So anyway, everything's good to go on that part. Uh, I went ahead and came out here and parked here. I wanted, I, I'm going to do some laundry, but the laundry, uh, laundry room was basically closed. The horse machines were down. So I didn't get to do any laundry, but I did get to take a shower and get cleaned up. And uh, and I'm just standing by right now. I'll re reset my clock tonight. I don't have to be at my delivery again, like I said, at nine o'clock tomorrow. So I'm only about 50 miles away. So what I'll do is I'll get up early and have me a couple cup of coffee like I'll normally do. And, and I'll hey, chuck, a, chuck a leg and get over there about eight o'clock and turn my bills in and see when I'm gonna be downloaded. And then I'll move over my other load's only six miles away, so it'll be be smooth to get back over if I don't have any issues for tomorrow. But uh, anyway, guys, I know I was reading a, a, a I was reading a Facebook page. Uh, there's a uh, Prime Professional Drivers page on Facebook, and uh, I noticed someone come, was thinking about coming to Prime, and uh, and he wanted to. He's talking about lease operate. He wanted to know what a weekly uh, revenue was. And, and I was reading the comments and I think, man, only in my dreams, these people are averaging 18 to $2,500 a week. And I'm talking net, not, not, uh, not revenue. I'm talking net, not gross. And boy, I sure would love to get in that picture. I'll tell you. And, you know, of course I don't get me wrong out of the, I don't know how many weeks I've been in now. I could tell you here in just a second, I've got my computer system set up here. So. I was looking at some paperwork here in a minute minute ago and going over some stuff just to see what I had here. Uh, get it pulled up here. <coughs> I've basically been, uh, I've been on the road, let's see, I started on the 24th of April and I'm looking back, let's see, my first full-fledged payroll, I had one check. I had one pay that came out. I really don't count that, guys, because it wasn't it wasn't a big load. It was one basic load, and then it was the end of the pay period on 4:30. So I'm basically counting. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I count it wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Man, computers, I'll tell you. Seven, eight, nine, nine, nine weeks right now. I'll be uh, ten weeks uh, after tomorrow, and you know I've not really done well. I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, I've only had let's see two pay two pay weeks that were worth of poop. 
out of all that and you know it's been tough guys and i i know uh it's been really tough i had a uh i'll give you i'll give you a rundown i had a 30 3100 week my second week out and then i went down i had a 5200 dollar week i had a 3100 dollar week a 3200 dollar week a 40 uh four thousand dollar week and then i went down to 1100 dollar week a 6200 dollar week a $2,100 week, a $2,700 week, and this week will probably round out to about $5,500. Sounds good, but that's that. I'm talking that's gross. That's not to the truck. All right, now, coming back over, and we're looking at some of this stuff here, we'll come back over and go up and look at uh, total cost to the truck. And you're looking at $2,900, $3,800, $2,200, $2,300, 3700 then I had a $700 one, and then a $5,200 one, a $1,500 one, a $1,900 one, and, a, and this week I'm saying basically 39 But actual pay in my wallet going to the house, and this is the jumper because of issues and problems, okay? We're going to go back up here. The uh, first week was 935 The second one was a good one, the 2500 or 2600 basically. The next week was 800 The following week was 165 And then it went to $1,700, which wasn't a bad week. And then I was in that hole, $608. Then I jumped back up the next week at $3,600. That's the best I've had so far. And then I had a negative $8.55 on the following one. Now, this comes with the problems I had with the uh, APU and all that crap, you know. So, a lot of times I was in a location I couldn't get a load or I just you know wasn't it wasn't a fault of the fleet manager or the load it was just I was down on downtime basically if you want to call it that it wasn't more than a few days a couple of days I think it was uh, one day 24 hours something like that and then uh, the last one was 2500 which was a clean pretty clean week I had to bust my ass to do that because actuality that was the week that uh, that was actually found the uh, problem with the uh, alternator so I ended up doing okay on that week, but I had to I had to cover a lot of space. <coughs> but anyway, and you, you know, this week will be okay, pretty decent. So to be complaining and not having money, I've had a couple of weeks there that I'd make nothing. I mean, basically, I was in a hole two weeks. The rest of the time, it was low. It wasn't at the eight fifteen or eighteen twenty five hundred range like everybody says they're consistent with. So I mean, you know. I'm happy for them. That's great for them. I mean, it just it wasn't hadn't worked out, you know, for me. I mean, you're looking at even at the mileage rate. I was only getting I got 1600, 2900, 2800, or wait a minute, 1600, 2900, 2600, 1700, 2500, 700. That was the bad week there. 793 miles, 1800 last week, and this week I've got 3262. So, you know, I'm not looking anymore at the miles, you know, per rate. I'm going to look more what you, the total pot, the total line haul, or the total estimated revenue, and how many days, and how many days with, for that re revenue. And the reason why I'm doing that, you know, and Jamal always taught me, you know, going by the miles, going by what the cost per mile is and that's a good deal you want to know that but then I look at how much you're going to make per day like on this load here my estimated revenue on this road with the amount of time I had on this load here I was going to average 680 some dollars a day so I look I got to look at it that way as well too so yes it's complicated the I don't know man I'm still trying to get through that invoice I mean your settlement page pages every day it just doesn't make sense. It seems like they give you reimbursement, but they take it out again. So it, I'm, it messes with my head. You see the number twice, and it just jacks my head up. So I'm not going to, I don't even want to try to decipher. I'm working on trying to learn it a little bit better, but it'll come around. I believe it will. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm great. You know, I feel good. I, uh, <coughs> I'm uh, doing well, staying my face, keeping my face covered up, not got no Kovo crap. 
trying to avoid it. I know the stuff's starting to pick back up. I was just talking to my wife, Shirley, yes, earlier this evening, and I guess Missouri is just getting slammed. Uh, their percentage rate has increased since they released everybody, you know, let them do what the hell they want. But right now, it's sad. I mean, I'm understanding it. Just It's, it's another break, uh, uh, another epidemic or breakout, and it's just ignorance, you know, I, I think. I, I can't begin to tell you how many people I've seen not wearing a mask in a common area. I wear a mask, so I don't care. You know, I care because of other people, but it seems like people just don't care no more. And, and it's gonna it's gonna blow out of proportion again, and then we're gonna be right back to where we were the first part of this year, you know, and, and that's a sad deal. I mean, I, I, I drove by several water parks up in Minnesota, and there was nobody wearing masks. So, I mean, driving by, you could tell. You know, they had their swimsuits off, but nobody's wearing masks. I went into uh, I-80. Looked like a few more people wearing masks in there because mostly truck drivers and stuff. But uh, civilians coming in on the civilian side of the uh, of the uh, of the store, there wasn't very many wearing masks. But I wear mine everywhere when I'm out of that truck. And I mean, if around the truck, I don't. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't wear my mask around the truck when I'm doing my my uh, PTI and my pre-trip and our, our pre-trip inspection or my vehicle inspection, I don't. I, I'm, I'm pretty well contained right around my truck, but when I do go into a Loves or a Pilot or a TA or Petro, I wear my mask. So I'm trying to keep that keep that clear. <laughs> I don't want to, I want to have no issues and everything, but uh, tonight it's doing pretty good. Uh, sun's trying to go down I guess I thought we was gonna get some showers but we didn't get any looked wicked a while ago but last night was a trip man I mean we I, when I was in Danville I got settled in you know and I was sitting out here watching some TV and all of a sudden I heard a big crack and I kind of looked out and it was pitch black I mean it, and I'm talking seven o'clock at night it was just pitch black out there I thought well we're gonna get hit something you know and then all of a sudden it just come and I mean you could hear it through the truck oh, above the reefer and above the APU it was flat getting after it no hail but then all of a sudden this truck started doing this we're rocking back and forth and I'm hoping I'm going to catch it on that camera up there because it was wicked and I'm hoping to save it because it, it was something wild I know David H and then his wife Melissa were in Laredo Texas and they were in the Mevlo one down there and this was I'm glad the truck was pointed to, toward facing the east because if it was sideways it would have been really a rocky show but yeah this truck was a rocking and I got a pretty decent load on here I mean I'm probably running high six, 60s or and low 70s so it was rocking this truck was jamming boy and it I, and it didn't let up 30 some minutes man just, just a solid downpour you couldn't see two feet in front of your truck so that was quite interesting and I've seen a couple of bad accidents, well, a bad accident day in Indianapolis involving a tractor trailer. I didn't see no additional vehicles, but he pretty much rolled it, well, didn't roll it, rolled it on the side, I think it was, smashed it up. And then uh, another truck, I'm sorry, in the one south of uh, Cincinnati, and it looked like it had just happened. But the problem was he didn't keep the truck up on the road. He didn't pull over. He pulled over and went right into the ditch and it leaned it sideways, and it looked like his brakes were on fire. And they were still flaming, I mean, and he was outside the truck, and I'm thinking, why ain't you using your fire extinguisher? Why ain't you trying to put it out? Because uh, I don't think he could have disconnected and been free of it because of the angle of the truck sitting the way it was. So I feel bad for him. I'm glad he's out of the truck. But that, that just happened. And, then, and what I was on the southbound, he was facing the northbound side of 75 or 71, I think it was 75. And the problem was, it was the media, so nobody's helping him. Everybody's just avoiding him and not jumping out and giving him a hand, you know, and that's that's kind of sad, but I hadn't seen no emergency vehicles or nothing, so it just had to happen, but anyway. But other than that, uh, a lot of traffic was out today. I mean, you know, everybody's finally, I guess, done with the holidays and, and everything seemed to be pretty busy. A lot of trucks out there running around, so. But guys, I just wanted to, excuse me, I just touching bases with you guys and wanted to say hi to you and tell you everything's going okay again and uh, hopefully we'll get this load delivered tomorrow Lord willing and uh, get us another load sometime in the afternoon and start trucking for a new destination so 
I'm going to let you all be. Uh, I hope you have a good evening. Uh, thanks to all my subscribers. I forgot to even look and see if I got more. And I apologize for that. I appreciate you all's comments and likes and uh, everything. And keep, keep, keep it coming, guys. I, I really enjoy the comments. I mean, you guys are a lot of help out there. Some of you got corrective criticism going on, and that's great. I don't care. I'm old enough to take what I get, you know. And that's fine with me. But uh, I appreciate every one of you, okay? And I want you all to continue to be safe out there, please. And and keep your face covered up. Keep your hands washed. You know, this stuff is, is a mess. And it's not going to go away anytime soon. And it's going to keep going on as long as these people don't follow the guidelines. I mean, it's just what it is. And I just hope it doesn't because we're going to end up having problems like we did before. And all we're going to end up having all these manufacturers and distribution centers start shutting down. That's going to cost us truckers a uh, pretty penny then. But anyway, you you all take care of yourselves, okay? And be safe and uh, and keep subscribed, like, comment. I would pre ring the bell and start watching some more of this stuff. Uh, it's my life, and I hope, hopefully it gets better now. I hope we keep trucking and keep moving on, and uh, we'll see how what it turns out to be. But Always remember, folks, we always keep driving and striving for perfection. Y'all have a great evening now. We'll talk to you tomorrow, maybe. Have a good evening. Bye now.